<laughs> By the time my 18th birthday rolled around, and this is entirely, not entirely autobiographical. <laughs> By the time my 18th birthday rolled around, I'd still never slept with a girl. Not even close. No extended dry humping, no cheeky fingers, no casual bit of breast. In fact, I'd almost made it to that point without even kissing a girl, although I managed to break that duck with just a fortnight to spare. I didn't really remember it, though. It involved someone's farm and three bottles of champagne and an op shop suit and an ill-advised king-size joint rolled by phone light in a portable toilet. <laughs> I'd woken up in Spencer Street Station the following day, caked in vomit, with the ghost of a memory of some sort of tongue duel happening in a dark corner, like I'd dived between a couple of hay bales to fight a bunch of oysters with my face. <laughs> <laughs> that episode ended with me standing under the garden hose fully clothed and a three-day hangover. Years later, I learned that on the bus ride back to Melbourne, I threw up on Matt Walford who was an intensely irritating four foot eight faux midget who spoke only in the most grating end of the falsetto range and suddenly all that indignity became worthwhile. <laughs> and I can only hope that Matt Walford was eaten by badgers. <laughs> <laughs> but it was already kind of worthwhile for the kissing, not so much for the kissing which I couldn't actually remember but the sure knowledge reported by reliable friends that there had indeed been kissing. The problem was I didn't remember how I'd made it happen. It was like stumbling across a lost city of gold in the jungle that you can never find your way back to. And that was always the bit that got me. The gap between talking, talking, awkwardly, fidgeting, and then suddenly kissing. <laughs> How do you just start kissing a girl, I thought. Still, at 17 years and 50 weeks of age, kissing alone wasn't going to cut it. I'd been obsessively thinking about getting laid for the best part of the five preceding years. <laughs> to say that it was a predominant thought would be like saying that the Pacific gets a bit damp in spring. <laughs> there were moments when I probably would have fucked a chair if it was sanded right. <laughs> and those moments were not few and far between. But year after year, the crucial act remained absent. And as they ticked by, the 18th birthday loomed like Amanda Vanstone over a dessert trolley. Ready to let gravity send it face first into it. Sweet Chantilly home. <laughs> now I was somehow convinced that if I actually made it to legal adulthood without ever having sex, some order of Poontang police would officially impose a life ban on me from any pants-based interactions from that point in. You had your learners for how many years, they'd say, and you never even sat the test. Virginity was a cow bell hung around the neck, clanging its warning to rightfully scare any target of hope away ringing out a note of incompetence and desperation. Please, God, I thought, I do not care how or where. I don't care if it's a joyless drunken thrash or a terrible idea or a truck stop toilet stall. Just let someone cut that rope away. In the eye of the hormonal hurricane, then, I made a pact with myself. I would, I determined, be an excellent lover. <laughs> I may be being robbed of opportunity, but when my chance eventually came, I would show them what the world of lovemaking had been denied for far too long. I would announce myself. I'd heard so many stories of female frustration, the selfish Neanderthals pounding away only in it for themselves, the guys like warm beers who froth over at the first touch, the uh, timid ones who couldn't follow through, the under-equipped recruits wielding cap guns in a war zone. I was, by my own reckoning, packed, strapped and ready to go. The best thing I could do, I decided, was be great at it. Then, when I finally did get my chance, I'd be ready. I'd be so good that the lucky recipient wouldn't be able to help telling everybody she knew. Word of mouth would get around like I was some sort of trendy penis cafe. <laughs> My brand was grow with each success. <laughs> now the key I knew was going down on women. I'd read Cosmo. I, I knew most women don't orgasm from straight sex. I knew that extravagant foreplay was the best way to make her relax, comfortable, show my thoughtfulness, massage oil, tea light candles, all that sort of shit. Eight or ten orgasms with the tongue, and then we're in. Self fire. Can't do that. I've only got one hand. Awkward. 
only problem was the lack of practice. Here I was just itching to be chivalrous and no dice. But I hadn't been expecting Melissa to be the answer. She was a tomboy and a good mate, a year younger than me, but about six years more sensible. And not your classic schoolgirl fantasy. She was cranky as hell, hair cropped bluntly with kitchen scissors. She swore better than I did. She could actually make a bong out of her own head in less than a minute. If she had. <laughs> <laughs> and as my final year of school ended, she watched me begin to panic. I would be going to university next year. I told her about 12 cones deep into a Wednesday night. There would be women, not girls, women everywhere. It would be wall-to-wall -wall fuck parties in some <laughs> animal house meet German gangbang debauch and I wouldn't have the faintest clue how to get involved. We've got to train you up, she said. <laughs> what? Not right now, she said. I'm fucking wasted. <laughs> Start tomorrow. When do we finish? When you get it right. <laughs> of course, everyone expects you to go for the cheap laughs when describing your first encounters with a real-life vagina. But it doesn't apply. There is nothing disparaging you can say about vaginas. And on a side note, the word disparaging always makes me think of someone talking badly about asparagus. <laughs> that's not relevant. No. A vagina on first contact is a strange and wondrous and beautiful thing, like a sea monster, <laughs> crossed with everything you've ever wanted. In some ways, yes, it is like pushing your face into a tray of warm luncheon meat, but at the same time it's powerfully alluring. No plate of silver side ever had this kind of mojo. <laughs> Appealing and perplexing at the same time. It's like when you're on your way to some drunk costume party and you catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror wearing a dress and you think, huh, that looks alright on me. <laughs> like that, but more heterosexual in its nature. And you're intrigued by this thing, you're fascinated, but by God, it's otherworldly. And so for four months of summer heat, I got schooled. Initial bravado dissipating like a fart in a hurricane. Congratulating myself on attention to the clitoris until she said, It's not a fucking Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> and while it can be a little hard to manage gravitas with no pants on, she still commanded my respect. And I really wanted that merit badge. Mastery of the female orgasm, it seemed at the time, was a one-time skill that could just have to be unlocked. Of course, I'd never seen one. Every suck in of breath was a false alarm. Was that it, I think? My jaw going numb. <laughs> and so breathing quick and I would go faster to try to match it. Stop racing me, she'd say, clouding me upside the head. I'd work away at it till my face ached. And after a number of attempts, she suddenly reciprocated. Now, it hadn't even occurred to me that this might be part of the bargain. And what a brilliant surprise that was. <laughs> it doesn't even require an analogy. It was like getting an unexpected blowjob. <laughs> I walked our suburban streets like the last immortal Highlander. No one on the corner got swagger like us. <laughs> The real swagger waited until the big day finally arrived. Staying the pace, reading the body language, responding right at the right time. And after all that wondering what an orgasm actually sounded like, when it came it couldn't have been more obvious. <laughs> we both lay still, she concentrating on breath, me nursing a jaw tendon that hadn't hurt that badly since I tried to tear a chunk out of a passing antelope. <laughs> <laughs> High five for Jesus, she said at last. <laughs> and if you've never suddenly laughed into a vagina, <laughs> and I can tell you that is a suitably surreal experience. Apparently, if you connect two of them with a piece of string, you can talk to your cousin. <laughs> so the walk home that night was through a February night as soft as milk. The thick smell of dying jasmine cloying in the air. The promise of next year in a life about to change. So close it was waiting in the next room. Wilting petals dropping off like cast off. <laughs>
off adolescent fears onto the footpath and through it all the voice of the last eternal Highlander.